Hi there, thanks for watching my video. Today I'm going to be talking about the issue of reverse causality. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about why this leads to this violation of the third gauss Markov assumption, essentially the zero conditional mean of errors assumption. And I think it's probably best illustrated by means of an example. So let's say you were interested in finding out whether the prevalence of a civil war in a country leads to a decrease in the level of the HDI index for that particular country. So we're interested in finding out whether the civil, if a country has a civil war, whether that leads to decreases in the HDI index. So we're sort of hypothesizing that beta is going to be less than zero. Well, we've already sort of spoken about the issue of reverse causality elsewhere there's likely going to be another effect which is also happening, which is that lower levels of the HDI index tend to be associated with an increased probability of a country experiencing a civil war. So we could almost sort of write down another relationship which is acting in the other direction, which is that the likely whether a country undergoes a civil war is equal to delta plus, um, let's say actually gamma times the HDI index in that given country plus some error VI. And we're interested in, sh in finding out why this leads to the above condition not being equal to zero. Well, another way of stating this above condition is that the covariance of UI, our error, with our independent variable in this relationship we're interested in here, that's the uh, civil war variable, which is a dummy variable which takes in the value 1 if the country experiences a war, and 0 otherwise. So if um, this covariance of ui with cw does not equal 0, then that implies that this condition is no longer equal to 0, and we've got the issue of endogeneity. So how do we actually prove this? Well, the way in which we can sort of go about this mathematically is that we can start out with our thing which we're trying to evaluate. The covariance of u with cw is going to be equal to, well, that's going to be equal to the covariance of u with, well, we can replace cw with this reverse causal relationship. So that's the same as the covariance of u with delta plus gamma times the hdi index plus v, which is the same as the covariance of u with, or, well, actually gamma times the covariance of u with uh, the HCI index, because I'm assuming that the covariance of u with the constant is going to be zero, so that's, that's always going to be the case. And I'm also assuming that the errors in these two models are orthogonal. In other words, the errors, uh, the covariance between the errors is also zero, which is a reasonable assumption, perhaps. Um, so I can sort of write this whole thing as the co gamma times the covariance of u with the HDI index, which is the same as gamma times the covariance of u with, well, I've got an expression for my HDI index, that's alpha plus beta times the civil war index plus u. And note that this term here is definitely going to contain the covariance of u with u, which is just the variance of u, which in general, is not going to be equal to zero. So we've proved that in the example where we have reverse causality acting in the opposite direction to the relationship we're trying to estimate, then we're going to have a problem whereby the zero condition, conditional mean assumptions of errors is likely going to be violated. So OLS is likely to be biased in this circumstance. What direction is it likely to be biased? Well, it is likely going to overstate the effect of the, uh, the prevalence of civil war on a country's HDI index because gamma in this relationship is likely to be less than zero as well. 